Hey guys, what is going on? This is Ip of Rage Quit TV. Gonna be casting a game between Xenix Line, who spawns as the Blue Zerg, and Slayer's Tasia, spawning as the Red Terran. I know it says Xenix in his name, but that is an old tag. He is on Team Slayers. It is a TVZ on GSL Metropolis. And Xenix Line, while he doesn't have any big accomplishments to his name, he has qualified for GSL Code 8 like three times to my knowledge, which is something no foreigner has done even once, so he is definitely a very talented Zerg player, even though he hasn't made it too far into Code 8, just getting into Code A is definitely a challenge. Slayer's Tasia, if you watch the ESV TV Korean Weekly, you know who this guy is. He has won ESV TV Korean Weekly number 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, and 14, along with winning the Grand Prix for ESV TV Korean Weekly about a week ago against Jochki 4-0. And that was like two months after Joshki won Code S entirely. Slayer's Tasia right now is in GSL Code A up against either Inca or Squirtle. And for a Code S spot if he wins that series, if he does lose it against those two players, then he goes into the up and down matches and still has a chance at Code S. So Slayer's Tasia may very well be Code S next season in GSL. And Xenix Line sent a relatively early drone scout is already across the map at 15 supply. He will be going for a hatch first and is just trying to find out exactly what Tasia is doing. He doesn't want to get two racks by Tasia because that is definitely something that is very scary. He does get his drone in Tasia's base right away and is going to go look at the mineral line and the gas to see if either is taken. Tasia did go for 13 gas, so the drone just going to double check that. He didn't see any SCVs on the gas. He's like, are you playing some mind game with me? Goes and double checks. Sees the SCVs go to the gas. He's like, okay, you're going to go for most likely a reactor to Hellion expand type build because that is what you do. The drone just going to sit here, be as annoying as possible. Try to delay the supply depot, but it doesn't really do all that much. The SCV does go out to scout after the barracks is done. We'll be seeing that line did go for that hatch first opening. Additionally, he has thrown down his gas and pool around the same time. The gas went down 30 seconds ago while the extractor, I mean the, Pool went down 30 seconds ago while the extractor went down 20 seconds ago. Not too much of a difference there. He does go for that pool first opening, which can indicate that it may be roach play. Generally, when I see the gas after pool, that is when I see roaches come out. And we do have a bunker from Tasia. Line does see this and immediately puts a drone on that SUV, but a Marine already there. Going to be going to work on that one drone and may get this kill. It doesn't look like it. It does return home with those minerals. Oh, is he going to get it? He does turn into an extractor to save that one drone's life, while this one is just going to be hiding out. The bunker, though, does complete Tasia. I mean, Line decides not to pull any drones to take care of that instead. Just going to get a few lings out. He knows it's only a single Rax. So he knows he can easily deal with this. He isn't going to be deviating that much. Is building eight lings, and that should be more than enough to deal with this bunker with the queen out. And he's really not reacting to this just because he knows it's just a one rax. He knows it's not a two rax. He knows not too many things will be produced. And um, bunker does get salvaged, and line easily defends that. And the reason why you only saw two Marines go by is it was a reacted Hellion. And that's why Line doesn't really care about it too much. If four Marines do come out and go in that bunker, he has plenty of links to take that out. And that delays the Hellion so ridiculously much. And that's actually a win for him. So he knows only two can go out to go into that bunker because, well, Tasia does want to go for those reacted Hellions. And he's going to be very happy with just taking the minimal loss he did. He built a few extra lings, but he is getting a roach one. Will be putting some pressure on. He is not just going to be playing some passive Zerg style. And Tasia may have an idea this is coming. He is right now going for the Watchtowers with those two Hellions. Once he has all four, he will be moving out. And we do see the roach one now just completing three roaches on the way. That does give line map control. It kind of kills off the Hellions map control. You do see the roach play a lot more. And at ZVT, at least in the early game, these Hellions are not going to be able to do too much. And five Roach is going to be coming out now instead of just those three. We will see Line start moving across the map. And the Hellions going to try to take out one of those Tumors. And are successful with that. Caesar, there's Roaches, I think. 
Uh, maybe he didn't see the roaches just yet. He is not getting a bunker. Uh, I'm assuming he did. Those hellions are definitely going all the way back home. We should see a bunker go up momentarily. We do have the roaches going across the map. The speed now just finishing. This looks like it is timed very well for line. Those lings will be making their way across the map, I would assume. No, he is going to be keeping them back at home just because these Hellions may do a run by, and that is going to be his defense. He decides to defend against Hellions without any spine callers. Does get the roaches to put some aggression on while keeping lings back at home in case the Hellions try to do some type of counter attack. Roaches come before the bunker can complete, and now he is going to be getting some SEV kills. Two SEVs so far. Three, four. And uh, may get the fifth one. That bunker, though, is going to be complete as he did kite those roaches back. And the roaches just going to be falling back after getting one more SCV kill. Seven SCVs have died thus far. And those Hellions going to be moving in for Taser right now. Keep in mind, Lynx are still here from line. And uh, they may be able to take out these Hellions. The roaches are splitting up. Those Lynx are going to start chasing the Hellions. The Hellions may run into some roaches. Does have two on this one washout, going to be moving up three over here. And yes, it looks like he is going to try to trap these Hellions. Two Hellions do find those roaches, going to be going away with the three more roaches. Now they're going to keep on going and run into some lings. And those lings do pin two Hellions against the wall. It does take that out. And this one Hellion is forced to, uh, we'll see what he ends up doing. A lot of Marines are coming. Those Marines are more than enough to take out these roaches. So we do have line retreating with these roaches while he is building some lings, getting a spire out, and also getting 10 lings. Does Tasia have any idea of this yet? No, he does not. Three banelings are morphing. We do have Tasia going up into medevac play, so he will be doing a drop. He knows that muters are going to come out around 11 minutes, so he's going to take advantage of the 9 minutes and 30 seconds to the best of his advantage, and we'll see if he ends up throwing a scan. I assume he will just before he moves out, just to ensure this is safe. We do have, right now, Line knows a drop is going to be coming. He has great vision, has an overlord right here, so we can see if Tasia tries to move out via the ground. The other option is to go for a drop, and we do have the scan right here to see both hatches to ensure, yes, a lair is done. And he is going to be going in with that drop. We have Lings and uh, some Banelings over at this hatch. In case it went here and plenty of units right here. Tasia is going to drop where those Lings cannot get a complete surround. And starting to pick up his Marines. No, he is going to be dropping them. We'll see if, when he does escape. He does see these Banelings and is immediately going to start going back. But we do have four Mutas. The dropships are going to start dropping those Marines. And Tasia didn't really do any damage there. Line is doing such a good job at defending against what Tasia can throw at him. Going into the workers tab, it is 44 SCVs versus the 46 drones. We do have plus one flying attack on the way. This one Marine does go down, but that isn't really that big of a loss. Marines are pretty expendable. Tasia does have stim and does have Hellions going across. Going to try to stop this creep spread to the best of his ability. And will he get this tumor? It does not look like it. The mutas do come. The Hellion is forced to go. It looks like he is just going to get a scout on to see if Line is going for a third base. That is where the Hellion is going. And yes, he does indeed see the third base for Line being built. At the same time, his orbital command is done. He will be lifting that up. And at the same time, is going to be moving out with some Bioforce. Cleaning up these tumors does not want the creep to get too far. And now just going to be retreating. But we do have a lot of lings running in to try to intercept these Marines. Stim does go down. We don't have any upgrades for those Marines just yet. While we do have plus one flying attack just about done. Those lings don't have any upgrades. That bailing speed is about a quarter of the way done. It looks like Tasia is just going to go into standard marine tank. Does have a lot of barracks and just one factory producing those tanks. Has a handful of marines in his main base until he gets those missile turrets up so he can defend against mutas as the mutas do want to come in but they don't want to see a bunch of marines with two medevacs as they won't be able to do much damage at all. We do have the third base now landing for Tasia as Line's base is now completed morphing. Going back to the worker tab it is 51 drones to 56 SCVs. Going over into the army, you can see it is very even, 57 to 65. One Marine is going to get chased away by all these mutas. Tasia right now is losing the map control as a line. Just wants to take complete map control and map vision because there's no reason why he can't. His army is so mobile right now and he has these overlords just to spot for any type of drops. As long as he has this washout, just look at his vision across that right side of the map. And he actually doesn't take control of the watchtower. Those lings are going to be going back and I can assume one ling will go on that. 
We do have line being supply capped right now, so it looks like an overlord did fall. And now you can see his map vision just has these overlords, the washout. There's this one narrow passageway right there where Metavax could be taking, but uh, line right now has excellent map vision. And now it looks like he is going to be posing just in case Teja moves out for a counterattack. Does he know about that third base? No, he does not. And looks like Teja wants to control that watchout, but Line is not letting him. There's Mutas just hovering around the right side of the map, just waiting for a dropship to come so he can intercept that. We do have missile turrets up for Teja, so he may do drops again momentarily as his main base now is safe from Mutas. Teja is moving out with a lot of Marines, and notice the split as he moves out just so Bailing Landmines cannot kill every single Marine. He takes control of that washout, and something tells him to pull back these Marines. I think do see Mutas coming in, and Marines are going to go try to intercept those while Lings go for this third, but Teja perfectly deflects that, and now he is going to be going to do a drop. Will Line see this dropship? No, it does not look like it. His next chance to see it is this Overlord right there. Meanwhile, Lion not doing the best job at taking control of these washdowns. That Marine is holding it way too long. Can see where the forces is, see what those upgrades looks like. Sees the mutas at 1-0 and those lings are at 1-1. Bainley's being warped by Lion. We do have this drop on the way. It looks like it will avoid this one overlord as Tasia is going to be moving out. Going to take care of a lot of lings. These Bainleys may go down. A lot of them going to be falling. Not canceling that warp and two Bainleys managed to escape. Actually only one. Bainling can escape. We do have a dropship right here. Sees the mutas and he may be going in now since he knows the mutas are not there to intercept him. Looks like he is just going to try to take those mutas out. The drop has landed his marines. I'm not exactly sure what he is doing with that. We do have Bainling landmines over here on the left side. A few lings on this one watchtower. Of course, Tasia does control this watchtower. And I'm still waiting to see this drop do something. He doesn't know about that base morphing in. He could easily cancel that. He's going to see the mutas here again. Knows that drop is very safe to use. And it looks like he is going to be stimming his units and running down to cancel this one hatch. Meanwhile, the Bailing Landmine still just hanging out right there. Teja keeping a few Marines back at his base to deal with mutas. This hatch does get canceled, but mutas are going to come to clean up these Marines. One muta does go down and... That looks like that is all the casualty clean up that entire drop. Tasia is at 1-1. Another scan going down to take out a lot of those creep tumors. For, um, Path of the Glands just about done for line right now. So he will have infestors with fungal growth, which can be very good as Tasia clumping up his marines, not really splitting up as he moves out like he was earlier. And it looks like Lion is going to try and catch Tasia out of position with his tanks on siege. He is coming in and actually backs off, decides to does not want to engage that. We do have a few Marines coming over here, and they may intercept the Mutas. No, they don't. And those Mutas have to be very careful. All the Marines are right there. We do see kind of a split from Line. Will he go and try to go for the complete surround? And going to take control of this one washout. Can see where Tasia's army is. And there we go. Line is going to be coming in. Going to be going for this nice split for those Marines. Those Lings not really going all those tanks. Those Mutas, though, do clean up all of those tanks. The Marines will be living, but the Mutas didn't really suffer that much of a loss. And he did clean up every single tank, and that means Tasia cannot move out across the map. I think he only has one factory producing tank, so that tank count is going to be low for quite a while. But Tasia has gone up on five bases, while Lion is still just sitting on three bases. And we do have Tasia just sitting right here on this one island. This is where Mutas love to fly to go and do attacks, and this may catch him way off good. As Lings are going to be moving across, this one tank is going to be caught out of position. Marines coming in, has to tuck those Banelings down, and a lot of Banelings do fall. And meanwhile, we do have that Muta engagement over here. Looks like a lot of Mutas will be going down. And those Marines did clean up those Banelings. Not too much of a loss, but oh man, has this Muta count been depleted. And we do see some dropship micro from Tasia right now. Now he's going to try to get his dropships out. Uh, no, he is not. But he is going to be moving. Does get phone goods by a bunch of Infestors. But losing that Muta count, I mean, if he kills all the Marines, he doesn't have that big of an advantage because he won't have air control. Losing so many of his mutas. 
And these Ling are going to be cleaning up those Marines. The Ling are at 2-2. Two, two. The Marines, I believe, are still at 1-1. One, one. No, they're at 2-1 with 3-2 on the way. Plus 2. I'm just about done for those Marines. We do have Ghost on the way, and this is not the new patch. They do have that full snipe damage, but I don't believe, no, we do have a Hive out, but no Greater Spire just yet. Still trying to reproduce that Muta count. And it doesn't look like Lion has enough to kill off Tasia right here. Tasia just going to keep on going. Not a single tank fell there. And still has some Marines. And as soon as those Marines do hit the plus three weapons upgrade, I don't believe those Mutas have any armor. No, they have plus one armor. But Tasia has been on five base for so long. You do see him building two more command centers. Lion finally going to be going up on four bases. And Tasia is still just very confident about moving across the map. After he killed all these muters right here, I can't tell you how big that was. And after this game, we will go back and see how many muters he actually killed. I think it was like nine. And Tasia just trying to figure out how he wants to move out. He does have control of both watchtowers. Can't see anything just yet. Does see the links now on this side. It is 163 to 142, but we do have Infested out for line. And he's got to back off. Those Banleys do go on those tanks. And now the Mutas do have to fall back as he has no more ground support. He has those few Infestors, but that is not enough to kill this many Marines of Tasia if they are split up. Mutas going to go in and try to pick off that Medivac, but no, he can't. Being very cautious with his Mutas, he can't afford to lose any more. Going in this loss tab, we do see that Tasia has lost around 4,000 less than Line. Still have a few Baneling landmines right here. Only two instead of the three. I'm kind of wondering what happened to one of those. And now Tasia wants to move out across the map. He is doing another drop. And this time it will be spotted by the Overlord. I'm not sure. It may just be in that Overlord's range. We do have plenty of Mutas to intercept the drop. Yes, it is within that. But a Baneling landmine does go off. Takes care of a few Marines. Not sure exactly how many that is, but Tasia is still ahead by 30 supply. Those mutas are going to be going to clean up that one drop as Tasia is moving out across the map. And here we go. The mutas going to go take out that dropship, and these marines going to go down extremely quick. Takes out one muta so far. May get another one. No, it does not look like it, but Tasia moving in with his giant army. A lot of banelings being morphed right now. We do have. Oh, no, those are not banelings. Those are broodlords, actually. But marines are going to get underneath of them. One does go down. And they immediately stop morphing to retreat. But if he can get those Boodlids out, we don't have that many ghosts, I don't think, from Tasia. And he may be able to hold on. The scan does go down, trying to target those Infestors, but they just get out of range. Marine's going to be splitting up to try to take out those Boodlids, and there goes the GG. Line knows he just cannot handle it at the same time. Was trying to do pressure over here, but those Missile Toads were going to take out his Mutas. And uh, just kind of realized how long this way, so he... I guess this base wasn't up long. These mineral patches are mined 500, but this one's only mined 5 minerals. That's a little bit odd. But maybe he clicked on one of these patches and says, Oh, wow, that's a third depleted. You've had that base forever. We do have Tasia splitting up, going in two directions. No doubt in my mind he had that game won. But let's look at two things I missed real quick. The first, the Baneling Landmines, when I was looking at the drop, so we can see exactly how effective that was. And then next, we will look at those mutas. And maybe it's a little bit further. Still see the landmines there. There are three, so definitely a little bit further. Okay. Doing the drop. Okay, the Bailey Landmine, I didn't actually miss anything. He threw the scan and took it out. Very nice job. Wonder what told him they were there. And now, the herd put finding these mutas. Actually, I'll do analysis. If you want to watch the mutas, you have to go to the end of the video because it may take me a little while to find exactly when that did happen. So, I am opening up SC2 Gears. We'll look at all the fancy things like the Lava Injects. Right now, going over into the APM tab, we do see line with the macro APM of 64, micro of 150. 
Wentasia, 104 with a micro of 137. Odunacy, 33% versus the 37%. EAPM, 141 versus 151. APM overall, 214 versus 242. Tasia is pretty fast for being a Terran. Going over into main building control because this is really cool. 23.2 seconds. That 10 second is like my staple point for just how a Zerg injects when he's not under any pressure. Let's see. 11.6. Not perfect. Not too bad though. Going to the end of the game you do see 23.2 seconds. Still pretty good for how long that game was and how much was going on throughout that game. Once it hit that mid game the action was non-stop. Going over into the build slash tech, we'll see 15 ghosts were built, 19 tanks, 17 medevacs, the 4 hellions, 263 marines, 5 corruptors, 5 infestors, 91, holy cow, 91 mutas. A lot did fall, 19 roaches, 302 lings, and 5 queens. Going over into the ability groups, we have 2 PFs, tanks, 40 stims, 9 scans, 33 mules. 8 Broodlords, 2 Greater Spire Morphs. Did he build 2 of those actually? Maybe built 1 and cancel 1. I don't know exactly. Can't find it. Won't really worry about that all that much. 4 Fungal Growths, that's not much at all. 75 ba Morph to Banelings and 56 Bond Lovers. So he really built a lot of Banelings and a lot of Mutas. That is where all his gas went, but he still managed to get Broodlords out by 25 minutes, which is relatively impressive. We'll go over this resources spent, and uh, we do have Line spending more minerals and a lot more gas than Tasia. The gas spent, he has almost doubled at 20k versus the 10k of Tasia, and for his minerals, he only spent 8k more, 49 versus the 41k. Going over to, what do we have left? Unit tiers. You can see when units were built in line. A lot of these periods where he's not building units. That is normal for a Zerg player. This is just his macro phase. May have built too many units early on and didn't do enough damage. But he did kill 7 SCVs, so maybe that was worth it. And you can see all of the Marines from Tejo right now. That whole blue, that is all Marines. He loved them. And the mutas, let's see, that's banelings. Mutas are yellow, I believe. Yeah, we have... So, around the 10 minute mark, he does build 10 mutas, then goes to 3, then another 14, then 9, then 10, then 6, then infestors, then... 25? What? There's no way he built 25 mutas near, like, at once. Let's see, that's 20, 39... Let's just watch this. There's no way. Let's see, five, nine. That's two more, eleven. And one more wave. Great Aspire. I don't know how it got to 25, but maybe, maybe it did, and I'm wrong. Well, maybe this does miscalculate every now and then, but man, that would be a lot for that one small chunk, meaning he had 2,500, 2,500 just laying around, then eight more over here. What mark is this? 21 minutes. Yeah, I don't think that is correct. Could be. But now, like I promised, we will try to find that muta, see how many mutas fell into those marines and how cost-effective that was. That, I think, was the, like, whole game changer as soon as that happened. Tasia had a huge lead. See, I think that was more around 16 minutes. Maybe it's just before here. Okay. So it's going to be really hard to get like a unit comparison. So before the battle, we'll just see how many Marines this is. This is 
11 Marines and 2 Medivacs. We can't really look at Lost at before and after because this battle goes on at the same exact time. But 11 Marines, and we will have... See, that is 12 Mutas or 15? That's 8, that's 5, that's 13 Mutas. So 13 Mutas versus the 11 Marines with 2 Medivacs. I think he goes down to 4 Mutas. There's that dropship Micro trying to keep his Marines alive as long as possible, trying to kill just one extra Muta. But yeah, goes down from 13 to 4. That is not cost effective at all. He does kill two dropships, but man, I mean, <laughs> 12 Marines, that is nothing in terms of the cost of all those Mutas. Hope you enjoy the cast, take care guys, and I will see you again tomorrow.